hey guys, um, this is the first part of the King of Jesus. Um, glad you came by the website and check it out. Um, I tried to record my sermon, but it didn't turn out really well because the sound was really buzzing and it would annoy the heck out of your ears. So I'm not going to upload that, but this will be good enough, I guess. Um, I'm just going to do the main, um, the, the, the gist of what happened. Um, in Mark chapter 1, verse um, 15, Jesus says, Behold, the kingdom of heaven is near. Essentially, what he's saying is that the kingdom, it's coming, and I'm the king. So what are you going to do? Now, here's the one thing about kingdom and kingship and how, how the world operates. In order to have a kingdom, you got to have a king. And the way the world operates, like the Romans or the Spartans or the Spartans or, or, or the Persians, the way you, you establish a kingdom is through violence and propaganda. That's the two ways we establish a kingdom. I don't care what you call over Afghanistan or or all the other conflict that's going on over there. It's war. America was found on the basis of propaganda and violence. We had one of the biggest army. We were in world power for a long time. But when Jesus came to earth in Mark chapter 1 verse 15, he's calling people to a different type of kingdom. When Jesus is talking to Pilate, he says, my kingdom is not of this world. Or when Paul is writing to the Corinthians, Flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. What essentially Jesus is teaching is that our kingdom is the invisible kingdom that we got to focus on. It's not about what we have. It's not about how much stuff we have in our house or our nice cards or, or the clothes or how much money we have. It's about spiritual kingdom. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, Our Father in heaven... Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, a lot of times we just think that as just a prayer. But what if there's more? What if Jesus is actually telling you that is your prayer, that should be your prayer, that is your life, is to bring heaven here on earth? When I go fishing, I, I love the scenery. I love being out in the ocean. I love just being by myself and, and, and enjoy whatever's going on and catching the big fish. And to me, I'm like, wow, that's heaven. And for some of you guys, it could be drinking a Coke. And you're like, oh, that's heaven. Or walk into your room after a long day of school and you lay on your bed. Oh, that's heaven. What is it about heaven? It's a place where it's peaceful, where no conflict is going on. That's the kind of heaven that Jesus wants us to bring here on earth. Is it possible? Yes. And it's up to you to do that. He says, Our Father in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth here as it is in heaven. But there's two things we need to learn before we can enter the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Jesus. He says, that The kingdom of heaven is near. First, it's to repent and believe. Now, a lot of us think of repentance as going to church on Sunday mornings and say, Oh, Jesus, forgive me. I fall short during the week. Or, or we go to church on Wednesday night to our breakthrough program and say, Oh, I feel so bad, so I need to go to church. No, actually, the Bible teaches that repentance is way, too, way, way much more. Repentance, it's about turning your life around the opposite direction of what the world is telling you to go. A good word for that is defect. Now, when you watch the movie 300, it's kind of cool. I liked it. If you can go on our website, well, you are on our website, but look, click on the Kingdom of Jesus, and there's a video that I made about the movie 300. Um, check that out. But it's, it's, it's cool watching those guys just defect themselves from all kinds of emotion. They have no fear. Just go into battle and willing to die for the king and willing to die for Sparta. When a child is born at the age of six or seven, he's, be, he's being trained to be a soldier. He's being trained to learn how to kill, to have no fear. Essentially, what they're asking of this child is to affect himself from society. In the same way Jesus is asking us to defect ourselves from the way the world is going, the way things are, and learn the new way, and that's the way of the kingdom. It's about believing that Jesus is the king, that we're not in control, that we're not the king of our of our society, we're not the king of our world, but Jesus the king 
of our kingdom. The second thing is to believe. Now, Jesus is the king. He says we can turn around and follow him, but also follow him with no regrets. Follow him with no boundaries. Follow Jesus with the intention that I'm willing to do whatever it takes to bring heaven here on earth. Are, are you good at doing your homework? Can you help somebody doing their homework? That's bringing the heaven, the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Are you, are you good at lifting weights, getting big? Like me. Can you give someone some confidence at school? Can you say hi to somebody? Can you tell them that, hey, you're a cool kid, man. Or are you the kind of person that likes to, to plant things or to grow things? Can you help plant trees around the community? That's bringing heaven here on earth. How about just coming home on time when your parents ask you to? Let's bring in heaven on earth. You know, there are so many practical ways that we can do that. But in order to enter the kingdom of Jesus, we got to repent, realizing that we're not in control, we don't have it all together, and that Jesus is king. And the second thing is we need to believe and follow Jesus with no regrets. And that's how we enter the kingdom of heaven. That's just a short snap of, of, of the lesson. You guys miss all the stories and all the applications. And, you know, there's more scripture when Jesus is calling Peter. But um, but next week I'm trying to get a better recording so I can, uh, I can uh, post it on there. But you guys have a good week. All right. Peace.